Greetings, Reiki with Will here. It's 1111 today, September 11th, 2016. And I already feel the energies of the full moon that are gonna happen technically Monday morning, but it's Sunday night that we're gonna be able to see the, the super moon. It's a super moon. It's the second super moon of three in a row. October, we saw a super moon. November, there's a super moon. And December 13th rounds out the trifecta of super moons for 2016. This is the closest full moon, super moon since 1948. It's, it's simply amazing. The energy around this full moon is fantastic. It's, it's also going to be the brightest full moon in 2016. The energies of this full moon are, are amazing. When we celebrate the cycles of the moon, we are celebrating the cycles of life. We, <laughs> the new moons, we celebrate the newness in our lives and bringing in the new to, to ourselves and the full moons, we represent the fullness in our life and the releasing of the old, the things that we don't want any longer. And we can also bring in the new during a full moon. The full moon is also the divine feminine. It's the fullest divine feminine. It's the, the moment of allowing. It's allowing along with our divine right action. So allowing the super moon, the, the feelings that we get on a daily basis, the breathing in and the breathing out. And this, this super moon is, is just simply amazing. Today I wanna to talk about the super moon, the full moon. I wanna talk about manifestation and high vibrational manifestation techniques. It's also 1111. This is a, it's a magic number. Google search, if you don't know what uh, 1111 is, it's sometimes it's our first clue that there's more to the universe. When we start seeing 1111 on the clock and things like that, that's, oh, why did I see that? Why did I see that? I just made a Facebook post, so check it out on uh, amazing coincidences of the universe that happened to me today. So let's see, full moon, 1111, the synchronicities of the universe, pay attention. How did, how did your day go? How is your day going? And are you listening to the clues of the universe? It's sometimes it's easy to get caught up in all the things that we have to do in our lives and the lists of items that are on our to-do list or some people call it the honey-do list. Um, what do we need to do to get through the day? And do you take time to smell the roses? Do we take time to breathe, maybe take a yoga class or do something just for us to help keep us sane, keep our minds right? What do we do? And breathing, breathing is key. And the cycles of the moon remind us to breathe. Yoga class, they. If you're breathing, you're doing yoga. It doesn't matter what you're doing with your body. If you're breathing and you're focusing your attention into the class and on the mat, you're performing, you're practicing yoga. And when we're stuck or when we're in the routine and we're trying to, to get all those things accomplished, taking time for ourselves is, is so important. It's important for our sanity. It's just important to listen to the universe when we take time to check in with our bodies we're also checking in with what the universe is providing maybe it's a random conversation maybe it's maybe it's just something that you needed i needed to hear that or that was an interesting person who knows what it is but the universe is trying to talk to all of us in many 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 ways and with that there's with the full moon and with the new moon, we can manifest. We can manifestation, manifesting on a daily basis is an awesome thing and using daily intentions to set your intention on how you're going to interact with the universe and how you would like the universe to interact back with you. 
choosing high vibrational words and terms is, is a great way to, to manifest. Let's say we can start out by manifesting just by wishing. You can say, I wish that the universe would provide more joy. I wish my day, I wish I would see more joy in the things that I do during the day. That right there is an awesome thing to wish for because you're focusing your attention on joy, which is a high vibrational term, and you're focusing your attention on what you want to bring into your life. Those two things are, are great ways to engage what you want to bring in. Maybe you want to be more commanding of the universe. And you say, I command the universe to bring abundance and joy into my life. And although I like taking responsibility for the order and chaos or building the order out of the chaos in your life, by commanding the universe. Commanding comes from the ego, and the ego is restricted in where it can work. It can only work out of the ego-based universe. It does not work in the places of energy that exist in the non-egoic state. So you're already dividing the whole universe in half by attempting to command the universe. You can, trust me, you can, but why not utilize the entire universe? So why don't we try to engage some, some ways of engaging both parts of the universe, the, the yin and the yang, the divine feminine and the divine masculine. We can engage the, the intention and, and the allowing. Intention actually sits on both sides of the yin and yang. Intention is a very high vibrational term. It exists in all dimensions, everywhere. You can intend in the lowest vibration and in the lowest dimensions, and you can intend in the highest vibrations. How do you think this whole thing was created? It created with one thought and one intention. It's that one and the same thing. It's just bam, creation based on intention. We can do the same thing. And with daily intentions, we can engage intention and interaction with the universe. But we try not to use too many words because if we use too many words, we are restricting how the universe will deliver what we're intending to happen. So why don't we say things like, if, if I choose to say, I intend that my interactions with everyone today will be fulfilling and joyful. There, I didn't restrict. I, I know I'm going to interact with people today and I'm setting my intention so I can take action. And I'm also, with that intention, I'm teaching how I see things. I'm teaching myself how I see things to see things with that intention as well. So what goes out, my intention gets placed on it, and what comes into me gets my intention, my high vibrational intention, that I wanna see joy and abundance coming out of me and coming into me. Awesomeness, total awesomeness. So what else can we do? We can say, I allow. Okay, so we're engaging the divine feminine by I intend to allow as much abundance and joy and satisfaction that the universe can provide today. Guess what? The universe can provide continuously. If you see from a heart-centered foundation, you're only going to see joy. You might feel the compassion for somebody else. You don't, and you might feel empathy and sympathy and and see that they're not in a good state. Let's just put it that way. But it doesn't mean you have to take on the bad state. You can still feel the joy and the compassion of helping while allowing them to have their feelings and to have their state. So with manifestation, 
we can allow, we can intend, we can command, we can wish, we can ask, we can do all sorts of things. Which one will work for you? That's up to you to decide and how you're going to engage the universe. You can allow the universe just to keep driving the truck or you can set your intentions and you can engage the universe. You can command the universe or you can co-pilot with the universe. The yin and the yang. At times you're going to have to be the yin and at times you're going to have to be the yang. If we try to control too much of what's happening in our lives, then we're going to get frustrated because things don't go our way. It happens to me all the time and I learn that lesson often and it's sometimes only after I get past it and I'm thinking clearly again, can I look back and chuckle and go, wow, that was an interesting lesson that I just learned. Um, or maybe you didn't just learn it. Maybe I didn't just learn it. Maybe the light bulb goes on today, but the lesson was provided six months ago or nine months ago or 10 years ago or lifetimes ago. I mean, in, in Reiki, I can, I can, Reiki shares with me past lives of mine and shares with me past lives of other people as well. That's the way I like to look at it. It's not that I can see past lives is that it's one of the benefits that Reiki provides for me. And when I offer Reiki, if they come for a past life regression, then I engage the aquarium fire and I talk them, the client through their regression and what they are experiencing. And if the aquarium fire shows me, allows me to see anything, then that's a benefit. And if Reiki and the Holy Fire work together to show me what's going on, um, sometimes they don't. And so I must rely on the client, the client's ability to communicate or to share what they wish to share. Because sometimes a past life regression is, is a deeply personal experience where that particular past life becomes relevant in this now for a particular reason, because something else that's going on in our lives or a client's life is the current life is bothering them and so the past life comes up and says I if you deal with this in the past life we can fix it and then you can actually address it in the current life um, that's one way to look at it and that way we can apply psychology we can apply rationale to what's going on in our current lives and helping us to find a good solution to what's going on. And maybe we can see things with a different viewpoint and we can get to the state of allowing and acceptance and, and see the beauty in the other person besides seeing this, this confrontation or this brick wall or this impasse that's in front or between. And, uh, how we get past that, how we resolve the conflict is very important. And sometimes we need to deal with internal stuff first before we can move and address the issues between two people or groups of people. Anyway, I digress. I digress. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the full moon on Sunday night. And it's technically in central time in Austin. It's going to be 7.52 a.m., on November 14th, but at almost eight o'clock, especially in Austin, the sun's gonna be up. So I won't be able to get a great look at the full moon and I don't even know if moon set is, uh, is at that time. I'll look at it. And if I get to see the full moon in the morning, awesome. It's gonna be the closest since 1948. So enjoy the proximity and the energies of this super full moon and happy manifesting. Namaste, my friends. Reiki with Will, November 11th, 2016. Unlimit yourselves. Namaste, my friends.